This project extends the original AWS Mini Active Directory Lab by adding Amazon Elastic File System EFS as a shared storage backend. Instead of relying only on local disks or standalone file server, this solution allows you to expose EFS storage in three important ways. First, direct NFS mounts on Linux clients. Linux machines joined to the Mini AD domain mount EFS directly for scalable POSIX compliant storage. Next, the Samba file server on Linux. A Linux client mounts EFS locally and then exposes those mounts via Samba, allowing Windows machines to access the same storage through familiar SMB shares. We call this the Samba gateway. Finally, we're going to show you how to use EFS for home directories. Uh, EFS can serve as centralized home directories for domain joined users. The Mini AD environment, which is Samba 4 on Ubuntu, provides Active Directory authentication and DNS services. EFS provides scalable managed NFS storage. Together, they enable a hybrid setup where both Linux and Windows domain joined clients can consume cloud native storage seamlessly. So let's talk about EFS a bit. Amazon EFS is a fully managed, elastic, NFS-based file system that scales on demand to petabytes without application disruption. It offers shared access for thousands of EC2 instances across multiple availability zones, elastic capacity that goes and shrinks automatically as you add or remove files. You'll see in the demo when we do a DF-H on the file system, it'll show something like 7.9 exabytes of possible data. So it, it looks huge. It presents as huge because it's elastic. And then finally, you have pay-as-you-go model with no upfront provisioning. This makes it really get it easy to get into EFS, but in my experience, what happens is you find out how expensive it is as you scale up. As you start getting to terabytes and terabytes of data, uh, the, the costs notably more expensive than other storage options, and you start thinking about NetApp on tap or Nasuni. So EFS is ideal for workloads requiring common data sets, content management, development environments, or domain user home directories. And this project is act, acts as a backbone of shared storage that both Linux and Windows clients can use under a single Active Directory domain. Okay, now let's take a look at the, and we're going to create, the first thing we're doing is going to create a VPC with a couple of subnets. So we have one subnet, which is fully private, where we're going to put the mini AD controller, mcloud.mycloud.com. And then we have a second subnet, which we're going to put the clients. And this subnet is public. So they both use T3 medium instances, and there's the Windows admin AD box where you can manage users, and we'll test the Samba gateway here. Then we have the Linux EFS client. That is where we mount NF EFS as home directories and also on slash EFS, and that's how we access it via Samba. Okay, let's talk about EFS. EFS is a, is a little wonky here. EFS is a regional server, so it's not in your VPC, but you need to access the VPC. So what you have to do is you have to drop um, a network card in each subnet you're going to be using. And it's a little bit more complicated than that because it's each unique subnet per AZ. So in this particular case, we have different AZs, so we need a network card for each one. And we'll show that in the console. And where it gets messy is if I were to have another subnet here, and when the same uh, AZ as like AD or one of these, if I tried to register a card, it will throw an error and say that the availability zone is already already registered. So it seems like it's registering by subnet, but it's really registering by availability zone. And then finally, uh, for all the domain accounts and admin accounts, we're going to create secrets that are loaded on demand, and that's what we'll use to access the, the system. Okay, let's talk a little bit about EFS. So EFS is AWS's fully managed elastic NFS-based file system. It's designed for shared access across multiple EC2 instances and other AWS services. The best part, it automatically grows and shrinks as files are added and removed. So there's no capacity planning to worry about. Now we'll get into cost. You pay for that, uh, no upfront costs, and sometimes it gets out of control. So when do you use it? Well, when multiple Linux or Windows servers need the same data set, you can use it Linux to mount it directly, and then you can do a Samba Gateway like we've done in here. Samba Gateway, I only recommend for casual light usage, but I, I've often used that with clients who are pure EFS. And if you're doing list and shipped applications that you have an NFS-based application on your um, on-premise and you want to bring it in the cloud, EFS is great for it. Um, and it's often used for home directories. That's one of the most common use cases for it. So why do people choose EFS? It's the pay as the go model that people really like. It's pay as you go, it just expands up. You'll see in the demo, it shows something like 7.9 exabytes. 
and it's multiple AZs, and it's a managed service, so there's no service to patch, it's all handled for you, the backups are handled in the console, but there are some limitations. So EFS is Linux centric. Even though we've done the Samba gateway to allow Windows access, that is not provided by Amazon. You're providing that yourself. So you're not going to get any support from Amazon. And it doesn't scale as well as, say, NetApp. But for casual usage, the Samba gateway is, is often utilized. Um, it can be higher latency compared to EBS or local disks, which is kind of expected. And uh, each EC2 instance has a limited number of connections. Now, it seems like a lot. I think it's like 1,024. But I had situations where we have a server prob a server access, and enough users are on that service accessing binaries and things for running code that at some point you get over 1,024 per EC2. So it really wants you to scale horizontally, not vertically. Uh, for most cases, that's okay, but sometimes with these higher-end servers where you have limited cores and you can only have one server, uh, it could be a problem. I, I put in, in down here the cost comparison just so you can get an idea of what one terabyte is. And you can see that it's quite expensive. Like S3 is the cheapest, then you have EBS, GP3, and then you have EFS standard. Now we have EFS IA, and the thing to think about is there are different storage classes for EFS, kind of like there is S3, there's infrequent access, and they have a whole thing about how much it costs to retrieve it and how slow it'll be. I find these tiered storage are usually happened when you have a system that's operational and you have a history of, okay, people are only accessing this data for so long. Um, so you usually don't, I usually don't set them up front, but as a system ages, you can say, oh, I don't need this data that often, so I can move it to a cheaper storage and save money. So it's more of a cost optimization after you go live. That's been my experience. Okay, let's talk about the prerequisites. If you go up here, there is an AWS and Terraform easy setup where we walk through how you create a build identity within um, AWS in the console. And what you'll need in this project is an AWS account with the, the access and secret key. Then you'll need the AWS CLI that's used in the scripting a lot. And then finally, you need the latest version of Terraform. Okay, now we're ready to build the code. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go into here and we want to copy this git clone and copy that, bring up your development environment where I'm using Ubuntu, paste that in, and you can see it's going to pull down the code. So the first thing we do on all our projects is we have a check ENV script. So check ENV, and what that's going to do is make sure that you have all the required things that we put in the requisites installed. And then it tries to make a connection using the accurate access and secret key. And if that works, you're good to go. So at this point, it's all set up and I can do a run. So I can do uh, apply. Now the apply takes about 10 minutes. So if, if you have any problems with this build or you have any questions, feel free to put your questions in the below in the comments section and I will answer them. Okay, the build has completed, and so now what we want to do is take a look in the AWS console to see what got built. So I'm going to bring up the console, and the first thing I'm going to do is go into VPC. So let's talk about our networking. Okay, so we, our main VPC is AD VPC. So we'll click on that, and we'll get the little diagram. And so we've got the two subnets. We've got the AD subnet, which is private. It uses a private route table and goes to a NAT gateway. Then we have the VM subnet, which is the public uh, subnet, and it has a public route table, and it goes into the Internet Gateway. So those are the two subnets. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so now let's take a look at the EC2 instances. So I'll bring up the EC2 console. And on instances, we have the three instances that have been deployed. The first one is the mini AD controller. We have the whole video on that. It is deployed in its own private subnet. Once that's deployed, we end up deploying the EFS client. And in that, it has a user data script. And in the user data script, it does a couple of things. The first thing it's going to do is actually join this mini AD to this mini AD controller using the secrets. And then once that's done, it's going to configure a Samba gateway. It's going to mount the EFS file system uh, on slash EFS on, on slash home. And that's going to provision a Samba server to share those two mount points to the Windows side. So that's it for the EFS client machine. 
And then we have the Windows AD. This is the machine where you would go and manage your users in this environment. Uh, you would use the administrative tools. But what we're going to do for this example is we're going to log in. And in addition to uh, joining the user data, uh, joining the instance via the user data script, we also um, deploy a startup script, which is going to mount the EFS gateway here as the Z drive. So you'll see that in the demo. So those are the three instances. The EFS client and the Windows AD admin server are both public in this scenario. The next thing we're going to look at is EFS itself. So you're going to go up to the top search here and say EFS. So here's our file system. It is, we've disabled uh, backups. This is the DNS entry that you'll use when you use your mount point. And we'll talk about briefly when we get into the network side of it. It's a regional service. This shows you the current state of everything deployed, which is 6K. So it's relatively puny right now. And this is the one that can get up to exabytes if you need it. Uh, there is a monitoring tab where certain uh, CloudWatch metrics are presented automatically in the console. We have file system policy and in file system policy, this is where if you want to share this EFS instance into another account, you can do that here. And then we have the networking. And this is the, the, the tricky part. This is the network cards that have to be provisioned such that the uh, mount points show up properly. So what you have to do is for, it feels like it's subnet, but it's really availability zone. For every subnet, unique availability of the and subnet combination in your VPC, you need to drop this network card in. And you drop the network card in, and um, then it becomes available. Now, one thing that's a little tricky is this DNS name doesn't resolve properly unless you have a network card for every AZ in your VPC. So if you, for some reason, this guy's not showing up, you need to check your network cards and make sure you have one for each availability zone that you're actually deploying in your VPC. Uh, it's, it's a little wonky, but that's how that works. And so the last part of this project we're gonna look at is the secrets. And so in the secrets, when we provision everything, we generate these random user IDs and passwords and put them in secrets. And so, um, for instance, we're going to log in to Raj Patel and we can say retrieve secret value. And that's what we'll use when we actually log in as Raj Patel. So now let's uh, demo connecting to the Linux box first. So I'm going to take this public IP address and hit SSH, put in the public IP address and we're going to do our Patel. Hit OK. It's going to say, hey, give me your password. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go back to our secret manager. I'm going to copy this guy right here. And once I've copied that, I can go back to our MobaX term, paste it in. Um, we've got the the Ubuntu image. Who am I? We do IDR Patel. This is all the UID GID numbers that we've covered in the mini AD. And if I do df-h, it's going to show you everything that's mounted. And so I have, via the EFS uh, helper um, mount utility, I've mounted EFS. And you can see it shows up as, actually, yesterday it was 7.9, but 9.3 exabytes. So a ridiculous amount of data. We only have a little bit of data in there. So we have two, two mount points. We have EFS and home. So if I go to EFS... You can say, uh, I put some data in here, uh, AWS DEFS, EFS. That's actually the project that we pulled just to give you uh, something to see. And then we have uh, data, which is nothing in there. So let's go to our home directory and let's do nano hello world. This is a file in my home directory. I'll do that and I will loss. And so uh, I think we've covered everything. There's also the Samba services running on that. And you'd see that in um, do realm list. It's going to show you I'm joined with SSD and with um, WinBind. You have to use WinBind for Samba. And so uh, I think if you do system CTL status, uh, NMB, SMB, it's going to show you all the services running. And of course, in Samba here, you've got uh, Nano 
smb.conf. This is configuring the gateway server. So this is the gateway server configuration. It's fairly simple. It has two mount points, which we'll see on the Windows side. You're going to have homes and EFS. We've done everything we're going to do on the Linux side. So now let's go back to the Windows side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to copy this guy here. Remote desktop, put that in there. And same deal, it's going to be mcloud R Patel and go back to our secrets manager and pop that in there. Okay, after a few minutes, you'll get logged in as Raj Patel. And so what I'm going to do is what are we deployed on this EC2 in, in addition to the joining of the Active Directory and the user data script, we also deployed a a startup script for each individual user. And in that startup script, we, we do a net use to map, map Z to EFS. So if I bring in the Windows Explorer and I go into uh, this PC and we've got this EFS mounted. And so we've got that EFS mount point. So we go back to uh, the Linux side and what you'll see is you're seeing the exact same thing. And I'm going to go to home. And first off, I can only access my home. If I try to access John, John Smith's home, it's going to say, hey, you don't have permission. You're not John Smith. But I do have access to my home. And you can see, hello world. So this is a file in my home directory. So let's do it the other way. Let's go to C and let's go to um, C programs, Amazon, CLI. I'm just trying to find something. I'm going to sort of copy these guys right here for no particular reason other than to show you uh, that the copy works. So I'm going to go back to my EFS and go to home and or Patel, paste that in there. And now if I go back to my Linux side and I go tilde, actually it's exit here. And you can see all that stuff is there. So now I can say, well, I don't really want that there. So let's PY and go back to my Windows side. And you can see they're all gone. So here we have uh, uh, on the Windows side, we're using the Samba gateway that we've deployed, which is a lightweight solution for accessing your Windows, uh, your, your EFS file system from, from Windows. You have to roll your own. You're not getting any of the support from Amazon. If you're interested in true multi-protocol, you're probably going to look at NetApp or Asuni or another enterprise NAS. Um, but this is, you know, good for casual light usage, for accessing home directories and things like that. So at this point, I think we've done everything that we're going to do with this demo. I'm thinking of doing another series or building on this. And I'm, I'm wondering whether I should do an RStudio cluster on top of this with EFS or a Jupyter uh, cluster or a VS Code server cluster. Um, Put put put, it, put down in the description which one you'd like to see. Do you want to see uh, RStudio built on top of this? Do you want to see Jupyter Notebook built on top of this? Or do you want to see VS Code Server? So at this point, we are ready to be good stewards of our cloud account. I'm going to log out of here. I'm going to go back to, and I'm going to log out of my Linux version. I'm going to go back to my environment. And what I'm going to do is run the trusty destroy script. And the destroy only takes about five minutes.